Alright guys, if you are watching this video, it's most likely because you have a SeaDoo 325, whether it's a uh, RXTX, GTX, RXPX, uh, whatever, um, and you have an, a leaking intake manifold, um, or you think you may have a leaking intake manifold and you want to find out how to fix it. So, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, there is a defect in the design of the 325 intake manifold. Um, it seems to affect a lot of skis. I don't, I'm not sure the exact amount, but I would say a good portion, I would say almost 90% of the SeaDo 325s have this problem. Um, it hasn't been addressed in the 2025 models, but now there is a aftermarket fix uh, that's selling for $140 or so uh, to fix the problem. And I'm going to show you how to fix it for free. So just to give some background on what the problem is, um, of course, when uh, SeaDoo switched, or when they moved up to the 325, they had a redesigned intake manifold, uh, which fixed one problem, which was the splitting seam, uh, but it introduced another, uh, which is where the uh, intake manifold actually mates up against the engine. So, the new style gasket they are using um, is just, it's a little bit thinner than the outgoing design, um, but the bigger problem is that the actual spacers that they're using um, are just a little too thick. So when the intake ma manifold is bolted up against the engine, um, those spacers, which are metal, are too thick and it's not giving enough cramp, uh, kind of clamping force on that gasket and it's letting boost uh, kind of seep through the intake, uh, through the manifold uh, space. I have a video of that. I'll show you what it sounds like. Uh, but essentially, in order to uh, test that, you'll need to do a boost leak test on your SeaDoo. Um, I made a video about that. Um, I just use this guy here um, and clamp it onto the supercharger inlet. And that will allow you to kind of fill this up. This was just a standard compressor fitting uh, to around 25 PSI to do a, a boost leak test. And if your ski leaks, if you hear any hissing... Um, that means you are leaking boost and it on a 325 you're most likely going to leak right here at the top of cylinder two uh, There's a very good amount of people that are experiencing that problem um, If it's if the leak is bad enough, it's actually going to throw a check engine light with the code p2282 uh, That's only if there's a significant leak um, If you're leaking a small amount or whatever, you're not going to throw a fault code, but it will affect your top end performance um, so you have to do a boost leak test to verify that you have this problem. Um, if you're already aware that you have the problem, I'm going to show you how to fix it. It's going to look a little bit more complicated than it actually is. Uh, but essentially all we're going to do is move, uh, or disconnect the intake manifold, take those spacers out, and we're just going to shave some material off. Uh, it's very simple, but, uh, let's get right to it. Just one more thing, uh, real quick. Um, these are the old style intake manifold gaskets. Um, I have a box full of these, so when I take my manifold off, I'm going to see if they're the same size or not. I know in uh, with that kit that you can buy for $140, it will come with these gaskets, but it comes with the shortened um, studs as well. Um, I'm going to try these out just to see if they make any difference, but um, for the most part, all you need for this fix is to shorten those studs. You can do it for absolutely free. There's nothing you need to buy in order to do this. Um, I'm just going to see if these even fit in those um, kind of like the pre-cut gasket holders that are on the manifold or not. But I'll get to this later in the video. Uh, for the time being, let's just go ahead and we'll start the process to get the manifold off. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect each of the coil pack connectors and the fuel injector connectors. Um, we're just going to slowly kind of move the wires out of the way here. So first things first, let's get those connectors disconnected. Okay, they're all off. Next thing we're going to do is remove the 5,000 zip ties. Um, I shortened the amount that I have on here because I've already done this and I cleaned it up a bit. But you're probably going to have a significantly more amount of uh, zip ties. So you just want to get all those guys off. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is disconnect the map sensor connector. Um, same thing, it's just this little snap connector here. 
Uh, and then we're also going to remove the throttle body connector. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, next I'm gonna remove the two T30 fuel rail bolts. They're holding a fuel rail in. I'll go ahead and pop that out. Just like that. All right, they're good to go. Now we're going to remove the hose connector holding on the intercooler tubing to the throttle body. Okay, now towards the back, the factory 325 will have a blow off valve hose. Um, the factory one is going to be a plastic fitting, so you just want to remove that or pop off the hose. Uh, and then you also want to just kind of loosen the coolant hose there just to get that under the, uh, or just behind the manifold so it's out of the way. All right, and next we're going to remove the seven quarter inch uh, studs that are holding the intake manifold onto the block. Um, this is them in the service manual, just so you can see what they look like. Uh, so if we were looking at, and of course I'll post this picture in the video to, as well, uh, but if we were looking at the engine this way, uh, you'll see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven studs that are holding it in. So let's go ahead and remove those now. Okay, I'm just going to pop the fuel rail out of the way. It just kind of lifts out and you can just put it off to the side, just like that. Uh, and now the intake manifold is completely separate. There's nothing holding it in. Um, you kind of just have to finagle to get it out. You'll see that the dipstick kind of does rest in a slot on here, so you'll just pop that out of its resting position and then it's free. Um, I'm going to show you how I get this out. I'll just put the camera over here, that way you can see me wiggle it out. All right, and here is the manifold uh, in the upright position. This is how it would sit in the engine, uh, but this is the problem area at the top. So I'm just gonna lay this kind of flat so I can do this one-handed. Um, but if you look close, you'll see where the problem is. And of course, like I said earlier, I, I fixed mine already, so you won't be able to see it here. Uh, but in the stock form, this is one of the studs. These studs, uh, the bottom lip, which is what you could see here, I know it's kind of hard to see because GoPro sucks at doing up close. Uh, but that's a lot flatter than it was, uh, or a lot thinner, I should say. This bottom piece is kind of like razor thin now, but it, as of when it came from the factory, that was a lot thicker. And when it's thicker, it actually sits beyond the gasket. So you can see mine is slightly uh, below flush with the gasket. Um, but when, when it was sticking up past the gasket, all of the clamping force was going right to the studs. There was nothing that was really um, squeezing down on the gasket to keep the air in. Uh, so on a naturally aspirated engine, it's not a big deal, but on a boosted engine when you're hitting, you know 15 16 pounds of boost uh, And there's nothing squeezing on this gasket all of the air is just going to shoot out all over the place And again, I'll, I'll post that video of when I did my boost lid test when you can hear the air coming out um, But the fix is very very simple. All you need to do is remove each of these uh, Like kind of retainer studs. So the gasket just kind of pops out like this and they're just gonna fall out, of course. I'm sure they're gonna fall on the floor. All right, so that's the gasket. You just pull that out, and you take, eight, uh, take each of these seven studs, and you just file down uh, the bottom here. And I'll show you how I did that on my, I used a bench grinder. Um, you can use a metal file, uh, like the ones I have somewhere over here. Yeah, this guy here. Um, so you can use a metal file, you can use a belt sander, you can use anything that would basically ground down material on metal studs. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did on the bench, bench grinder, but what you need to do is ground it down to about 19 millimeters thick. The whole thing should be 19 millimeters thick. Um, actually, I'm going to put this down so I can show you with a caliber. All right, so in the stock form, this thing comes around 23, 24 millimeters thick or so. And you can see this is one I adjusted. It's around 18.9, mil, uh, 19 millimeters. You want to aim for 19 millimeters. Um, that seems to be the sweet spot. Again, I, I did this modification when I, right after I bought the ski, so it has about 40 hours or so of runtime with this mod, um, or this fix, I should say. And uh, it, the problem hasn't come back since. So you can see, like that's that's 22 about. So you can see just how much material needs to be shaven off uh, for this to work. 
but essentially when you shave the material off all you're doing is reducing the amount of uh, room that the stud has to back off of the block and when you do that you give more room to squeeze uh, the gasket obviously the tighter the gasket the more air that it can hold the more boost it can hold uh, and there's less chance of uh, your gasket leaking some boost so I'm gonna show you how I did this on my bench grinder um, I'm gonna, and then I'll show you how to do it on the uh, um, with the metal file as well all right, so with a bench grinder, literally just turn this thing on, let it get up to speed. And just very, very slowly kind of feed this thing in. I'm not gonna do it here because I already filed mine down. I don't wanna do it anymore. Um, but just slowly file away at material. You don't wanna do a lot. You wanna do small amounts at a time. Uh, again, because if you do it too much, you're gonna shrink this thing and then you're never gonna get the torque specs or anything right. Um, with a metal file, all you need to do, and it's probably easier to use something like this, is literally just go back and forth like that um, to uh, etch away at the material. The only thing I have to say is when you do that, just make sure you try to keep this piece as flat as possible, uh, because if you file on an angle like that, all you're gonna do is put the top piece on it. You're gonna file away at an angle and then it's never gonna sit right. Um, so as you're filing, just keep checking your, your, uh, how long it is, uh, and then file away material until you get to the right spec. Around 18.9 to 19 millimeters is the sweet spot. All right, and just like I said earlier, I'm going to experiment with using the older style uh, 300 and prior intake manifold gasket, because you can kind of see, like there is a thickness difference. The old style is just a tad thicker, not not by much. I mean, it's very fine difference. Um, I'm gonna try this on mine. If you wanna do this to yours, I'll post the part number in the description. Um, but like I said, I, I've been running um, with just the shaven studs for a year with 40 hours and I had no more boost leaks up to 25 pounds, which is beyond what the supercharger pumps out anyway. Um, but either way, if you shave down your studs, uh, you should be all set. So let's go ahead and we'll get this thing lined up to put it back into the ski. All right, before I put the manifold all the way back in, I just want to point something out. Uh, a lot of people miss this when they reinstall their manifold. Uh, but if you notice at the bottom, there's this little kind of like key archway. You want to line that up with the studs that are, let me get my flashlight out, uh, that are sticking out right here. Uh, you can see how there's, oh, my arm's in the way. You can see how there's a notch in the way of that rubber stud. Uh, the keyway from the intake manifold is going to sit right on that, and it kind of keeps it in place. A lot of people miss that, and they go beyond it, or they go in front of it, and then the manifold just never really sits right. So just make sure you get it lined up in there perfectly. All right, and then uh, just before you push the intake manifold up against the block, just make sure that you reline up your uh, dipstick. It kind of just snaps into place just like that. Uh, and then once that's done, you can kind of just line this up, make sure you're not hitting anything on the harnesses, make sure all the harnesses are up, uh, that you didn't bury anything under, and then uh, you can just start pushing this up against the block, and I'll show you how we torque that down. Okay, and this is the torquing sequence and the spec. So I'm gonna follow this. Uh, you're basically just working from the inside out just to kind of spread the uh, gasket out. Uh, and you wanna torque these to plus or minus 11 Newton meters. I'm gonna do 11 and a half just to get some extra clamping force. Um, I'll post this graphic online obviously so you can see the torque sequence for yourself. Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll do that now. All right, intake manifold is bolted on. Next thing is to just get your fuel rail back in. So the injectors will just line up. There is a gasket on them. Um, so you just want to kind of get those seated and then just push in on each one until the whole rail is snapped into place, just like that. 
and then uh, we can go ahead and put the logs on. The, there is a torque spec for these, um, but I just get them kind of decently tight. I don't really need to follow the spec on here. Uh, the spec for these is nowhere near as important as the one for the intake manifold. So let's get this tightened up real quick. Okay, and then beyond that, it's really just a fun game of reconnect everything you unplugged. So um, that is, you'll have your injector connectors. We'll pop those in. Um, and I'm not going to do everything here because I'm going to, uh, there's just a few in the way. But make sure you get your injectors. You have your coil packs. You have your throttle body connector. You have your map sensor connector. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much it for connection wise. And then I'll show you how we can kind of clean this up with uh, zip ties and we'll reconnect the intercooler hose. All right, to clean everything up with zip ties, uh, by the way, if you work on sea it's worth having bags and bags and bags of zip ties because sea loves to use them. Um, when you're putting zip, tie zip ties back on, you want to make sure that you zip tie your blow off valve hose. Um, Sea-Doo also puts a zip tie here on the throttle body wire just to eat up some slack. Uh, I would put that back on because you had to cut that off when we took the throttle body connection off. Um, and then beyond that, you just have to kind of tie up everything in here. Um, the fuel rail has a little mount. You can barely see. Um, this is where the, the wires are going to be zip tied onto. So there's one, two, three, four of them. So we'll have four main zip ties that kind of just encapsulate this entire trunk of wires. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right, everything's back together. Um, just to be safe, I'm going to do a boost leak test. Um, I know it's not going to leak because I already did the fix, like I said. If you want to know how to do a boost leak test your own, on your own, um, I did make a video on how to do that. So you can see I just have the boost leak tester clamped on to the supercharger inlet. Um, I'm going to fill this up to seven, between 17 and 20 PSI uh, because this operates at around 16.7 PSI max. So if it's not leaking at 17 to 20, then it's definitely not going to leak um, when I'm demanding boost. So. Let's go ahead and crank this up. Uh, I'm going to start the regulator to around 15. There, and we'll watch this kind of build up boost. So, let's see, that's 5 PSI, 7, that's 10. And it's starting to, it's almost at 15 just short so I'm gonna crank this up just a tad more that's 15 there go a little bit more on here seventeen psi and so far everything seems fine so let's go ahead we'll let this air out And that's it. So this mod was successful. Um, I really don't see how those gaskets would have benefited. Um, these were doing perfectly fine for me. I actually might just put these back uh, and take those back out because they were my spares for another sea -Doo. Um But that's pretty much it for this. Uh, if you have a sea 325, uh, RXTX, GTX, RXPX, whatever, um, you definitely want to check for boost leaks because it seems like this is extremely prevalent. It's a very common problem uh, that I'm surprised they didn't fix in 2025. Um, so you do not need to buy the $140 fix. Uh, this is a completely free mod you could do on your own. You can do it in less than an hour, really. Uh, super, super easy to do. It looks far more complicated than it is. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, just message me and I will get back to you and we'll get you all straightened out.